I just finished this and I was hoping to take you guys through the whole process of how I did it. This is a whale's tooth and then I carved it and scrimshot it and ended up with a puffin. Hello again and uh, welcome back to Stockman Originals. I'm Brian Stockman and I want to start off by saying thank you guys for so many subscriptions. Our tribe is building really quickly and that's so exciting. We've been getting a lot of interest in one particular video that we did earlier on. It was a scrimshawing a whale on a piece of whale's tooth. And there's been so much interest in that. It's kind of prompted me to want to pursue a more in depth look at scrimshaw and um, something that I had wanted to do from the very beginning anyway. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take this little whale's tooth and we're going to carve that into a puffin. And then I'm going to scrimshaw that. So this will be a, a little bit more advanced scrimshaw technique. It should prove to be a lot of fun. Thank you again for all your subscriptions and support, your comments, love that. Everybody that do, does these things, I'm, I know it just loves to read the comments because it means a lot, it gets feedback from what y'all are thinking and stuff. But anyway, what I'm going to work out of is I have two very well-worn bird books. One is the Audubon bird book. Really nice reference. It's all these great photos. And then I've got uh, Roger Torrey Peterson's book. And this is one that I've used since I was a little kid. Car when I first started carving, I first started carving birds. <laughs> the difference between the two and what makes them a nice complementary pair is that th this is illustrated with paintings. The Audubon book with its photographs, they're very good photographs, but photographs are kind of, they are what they are, and sometimes they don't point out some real details that they did in the paintings here. They, they actually point out like, oh, this one's got a little white stripe here or, or you know, a spot over there that you want, might not pick up on with a photograph. So between the two of these, it's a really good reference. So I'm gonna find a nice picture of a puffin in there. There we go. Puffin. There's a nice definition of the coloring of the beaks and such. And we're gonna start by carving this little guy up. And the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, cut the base so that it sets nice on a table. And then we'll be cutting the, um, the tip off here, which I save for smaller carvings. It's a miniature Netsky of a rat. Born in the year of the rat. I'm going to do, all right, put it so you can see it. I might have forgotten to mention it. We're going to first carve this puffin. Then we're going to scrimshaw it. All right, I think I've got enough to get started with. That's aligned mostly a suggestion at this point. So I'm going to cut the base and the tip off and we can get started carving. I like a nice little carving all on its own. Yeah, that's as far as I'm going with the saw. So with this type of, um, of work, I'm going to keep the carving kind of simplistic or, or not, well, kind of primitive or softer than Say, if I was going to carve Netsuki or uh, Okimonos or something like that, where all the detail, I mean, you can't put enough detail into the carvings on those. This is a different style. This is a much softer approach. And then it leads, it lends itself well to the scrimshaw aspect of it all. This is usually the moment of truth. You can maybe see the outer layer of the tooth is white, the inner is a more caramelly, creamy color. Quite often, there's a separation, a delamination between those two layers. And in this case, it's not going to be there. It's, a, it's perfectly solid. It's going to make a nice carving. I'm so excited. You can already see the depth of it. So anyway, um, we'll move along to the next stage. We're going to go into our vacuum chamber. Yay. Yeah, we're going to start off with a, a, a round or ball burr cutter. It's a rotary file. Works with this flex shaft. Really, really cool tool. That's what I'm going to use for knocking off 
pull out of the bolt. Gonna turn the vacuum on. Don't want to breathe this stuff any more than possible. You can see I've gotten down into that uh, premier colored inner ivory down here and still no sign of delamination. We're golden. This is Princess Athena who is here to help guide me through this project. and power tools and stuff so basically what i'm doing is this is a natural uh, texture of the tooth here i'm going to use this tool to scrape that away smooth it out and uh, make ready for the details <laughs> So here I'm using a chisel to cut in some of the finer details. Finest we're gonna get. That one fit. Nice. Got them both in. Very cool. Max is here and he's putting his knife together. Pretty good now. Um, it's been about 10 hours of carving and scraping. I'm going to start sanding on it now. That's the next step before we actually start scrimshawing on it. Hey, if you like what we're doing here, uh, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. It helps our channel very much appreciated. Plus, any comments, love to read them and learn from, from you guys next step is steel wool and i'm moving my tools away from the, the splash area here because they're kind of magnetized through use steel wool sticks to them awful it's fortunate ivory is uh hard but it's soft enough too that the steel wool works really well with it and you really only have to sand to 220 and then steel wool. I mean, you can go to 320 and 400 if you want to. Uh, wouldn't hurt, I suppose, but it's kind of a whole lot of extra effort for not much result. I think we're ready to scrimshaw. I know I said 10 hours of carving earlier, but I checked my fancy records here and Turns out there were 12 hours of carving, and I'm guessing about an hour and a half of sanding and buffing. Um, so that's 13 and a half hours, right? 
to get to the point where we can scrimshaw. If I pick this stuff up and it doesn't stick to my tools, 